Hello Pisces, welcome to my channel. This is going to be your 2024 forecast for Sun, Moon and Rising. We are going to be doing a spread, a card for each month of the year. What that means is that you can return back to this video at any point during the year. I will repost uh, links every month so that you um, don't have to scroll through your history. And uh, you can check to see where you're at in the year and what is coming towards you. But we'll do the whole forecast now. We will also do a theme for the year for you, a message from Spirit and a cross of truth. And the cross of truth will tell me kind of where you're at, the challenges that you can be facing and uh, what's working in your favour as well. Okay, so let us begin. Beautiful Pisces. We will get a theme from the Sacred Destiny deck. Please remember that energies are non-gender specific. Take what resonates, leave the rest behind. Okay. And of course, if you do like this video, please give me a thumbs up, uh, comment, share, totally free to subscribe if you choose to. Ooh, these cars are getting a little nuts. Okay. Let's see what is coming up for Pisces. Your theme for the year. Oh, abundance. It's all about abundance. This is your focus for the whole of the year. Now, abundance comes in many, many forms. Of course, money is the first thing we think about. Time, freedom is another form of abundance. Gifts, favors, trade, anything where you feel that you're able to do what it is you need to do. All right, so that's quite nice. You've got abundance. Okay, let us look. I'm going to use my deck for each month of the year. And if you just bear with me while I lay it all out, and then I'll go in through into each month for you. Pisces 2024. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, well, <laughs> I've just done um, a Scorpio's reading and that was quite probably the most challenging reading I've done out of all the star signs so far. And this may be even the most positive one. So definitely um, quite a grand year for you guys. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four major arcanas. Major arcanas are like predestined currents of energy. So you're going to be experiencing no matter what. The minor arcanas are more like your day-to-day -day temporary energies, which you can change and maneuver when you know what the energies are. All right. So let us do, I'm just going to do the cross of truth spread and then I will jump into your reading Desire, ooh, it's working in your favor, challenge, and the outcome. Okay, so two cards have turned up in your cross of truth as over here, but I'll get into that in a moment. First of all, we start off with January pretty strong. Major Arcana, we've got the judgment card. Okay, so as you start the year, you're feeling revved up to go. It may have felt like you've been through a bit of a slog um, in December of 2023. January is a whole new kind of leap of faith, really, into deciding something that is more in line with you. You're starting the year strong. You're kind of going, you know what? I need to make my choices now. I need to decide now where I want to go towards, okay? So there may be a decision that needs to take place with regards to the home or with regards to work, okay? Because maybe the work is shifting for you in... Um, 
moving into February time. Now the judgment card is really a card about, um, it basically says that this is happening whether you like it or not, okay? You have to make a decision. In one way, you can either go with the old and resurrect something from the old, maybe even a past flame, or um, going back on a particular working endeavor you used to do, or you go with the new, okay? And the new is um, uncharted territory, but ultimately life will never be the same again. So even if you resurrect something from the past, life will not look the same again. So you do start the, the year off pretty strong of like a whole new version of you. And as you move into February, we've got the Nine of Pentacles. So whatever you decide to do, right, it, you are moving more into a place of self-sufficiency, independence, foresight, having exactly what you need, and maybe a little bit left over to share, okay? Nine of Pentacles, sometimes it's a quite a solo card, but it doesn't mean to say that you're leaving everyone and going by yourself. It really marks independence. Independence on the sense of um, having the freedom to make the choices you want to make rather than allow anyone else to make them for you. And maybe that's got something to do with what happens in January about making a firm judgment call. Because it feels to me like you're choosing yourself in January. So whatever that choice is, it's for you. Remember, it's we sometimes human beings, <laughs> we sometimes uh, feel that we need to maybe sacrifice our own happiness to make sure everyone else is happy. Um, it never works out because then we are deeply unhappy, it festers after a while, we get resentful. So it never kind of works out for the best. However, if we are choosing things that are in alignment with ourselves, within our authentic truth, then we are going to be happier. And the rippling effect of that is going to serve everyone else around us much better than being kind of a bit of a miserable person, right? So it feels to me that whatever judgment call you're making in January, it really sets the tone for the whole of the year. And it's got everything to do about your path. Maybe it's your spiritual path. Maybe it's your career path. Maybe it's your um, family path, okay? Maybe it's your physical locations. Maybe there's travel involved. But whatever it is, come February, you are really feeling self-sufficient and you've got what it takes. And it's a heightened sense of confidence, um, aspiring for more, and having a bit of a vision for the future, okay? With that, having that resource available to you and understanding this concept of what abundance really truly is. In March, you have the Ace of Wands. So now, having experienced this idea about these, um, a sense of abundance and excitement and self-sufficiency and independence, we have an inspiration, a spark of light, something that gets us really, really, really excited, okay? And it's like, if I did it this way, nobody else has done that before, and I'm going to grab it. So we have an opportunity, we have like this inspired action happening in March, which is glorious, basically. But it has a, a sense of timing attached to it. It feels like if you don't grab it quick, it's going to burn out. So this could be anything, by the way, of maybe a new romantic partner, you know, comes and if you don't grab hold of it, then it will fizzle out, okay? So there's something about striking while the iron is hot in March. Seize that opportunity because it's it kind of feels like it's divinely guided from the cosmos. It's like you're putting in those activations, you're putting in that shared knowledge of it in consciousness and and you've, you've received a thread line of that. And you've, it feels to me like you have the abundance and the resources to make this happen. So it's really, really cool. Now, that's in March. As you move into April, we've got the moon card, okay? So you may be entering into a phase of like, oh goodness, I, I striked while the iron was hot. I decided to go with this inspired action and I put all my eggs in one basket and now I don't, it's like that kind of, um, hesitancy we feel after we sort of impulsively do something there's like oh dear did I do the right thing so you may be second guessing yourself in April okay and this is with regards to any of that new whatever that new beginning was you're second guessing yourself you don't know how it's going to play out in society you don't know how it's going to play out within your close connections everything seems a little bit uncertain 
you may be feeling a little bit kind of isolated in that energy, like a lone wolf, because you like you feel like you embrace this. But I don't feel like you've. I've, the sense I get with this is that it may feel like you're unsupported in this. Okay, but remember, you've got the abundance card, and as long as you you are self-supported, others will follow. So you may enter into a phase in April of feeling maybe um, easily triggered or highly emotive um, because you can't quite see where this new beginning is going to go. Okay, particularly if there's changes in government, changes within the in the economy. What I would say with you is that just trust the natural flow because things are definitely going to shape up well for you, but just go with the flow. If there are delays, if there's stagnancy, okay, with getting this into a more um, easy flow and roll, right, then just allow the delay to come in, settle the discordance within yourself of anything where you feel a little bit isolated or unsupported, deal with that, use that time wisely while everything sort of shifts back into balance, all right? So the moon card again is a major arcana, which means you are gonna be feeling that one way or another, okay? Perhaps for some of you, if you had that inspired idea, maybe you didn't choose that, and maybe you go through a period of like regretting that, and then seeing how you can maybe create something better in your environment that is more in alignment with, with your path, okay? But ultimately, the moon says you're on the right path. It just seems like things are shady and not so clear cut. So there is a lack of full illumination of the situation and we all have to move through the moon energy at some point in our cycles. So it's really a question and a test of faith, okay? Allow yourself to feel a bit uncomfortable in that energy, but see if you can allow yourself to be as flexible as possible to move with the times, okay? As we move into May, we've got the Seven of Cups. So now you, it's, it's almost like you are going back to your drawing board a little bit and you're allowing yourself to play with new ideas. The Seven of Cups has a bit of a dreamlike quality. It's understanding that you actually have a lot of ways that you can go, a lot of different avenues you can take, okay? And maybe you're having a play in your mind or in your emotional body and trying to think up, think up um, how to take that Ace of Wands, having, having achieved a sense of um, self-assuredness in your independence, you're starting to recognize how many more opportunities that you have available to you. And the opportunities can also come up as options, right? The more options we have, the more abundant we are, essentially. So you may be toying with different ideas come May. Maybe it's taking that Ace of Wands and turning it in, into something else, having gone through the moon energy in April. Or maybe it's just uh, allowing yourself to just dream a little bit. But what I quite like about this energy is quite, um, quite spiritual because you go through this dreamlike quality, right, of the Seven of Cups, and then in June, and she's snoozing over there, okay, in June, you take it a step further with the Hierophant. So not only have you dreamed something into being, now you are literally accessing information from your higher self, okay, information from the field, okay, to better inform you. So you've stepped it up a level. In one case, you, you experience the human side of it, you know, the fantasy, the playing with ideas, you know, uh, talking about it logically in the heart space, what, it would, what would it feel like? And then as we move into June, it's like once you've established all of those avenues, options, parameters, now it's like, okay, well, I'm going to meditate on this. I'm going to really go within and feel what is actually shining brighter as an option that shadows every, overshadows everything else and it may not be the um, obvious choice okay that's when you're accessing stuff that's when you're kind of reading beneath between the lines you're sort of sensing the energies around you the hierophant also talks about kind of higher systems at play so that is one of the higher systems at play that we are 
um, connected within the consciousness field, okay? But you may also be looking at it from a very kind of dense 3D level in terms of what are the highest systems at play in terms of my location of where I am, in terms of the local the council, the local authority of where I am living. What is, What are the parameters regarding the social structures in accordance with my um, the work that I do? Okay, Should I be looking elsewhere at different places that are more um, open to my endeavors? So you really are kind of doing both the spiritual accessing of information and then you're applying those ideas into the kind of the soil and working out the structures of that with regards to where we are now. Now, of course, humanity are, be go are going to be going through quite a bit of a rough ride in 2024. Um, I won't go into it now, but I will put a channeling of the forecast that's coming up. But, they're, they're, you know, there will be um, probably a, a period, a three-month period, only a three-month period of uh, heightened inflation, and everyone's going to go a bit crazy. Um, thinking that, oh, everything's run out, it's another COVID energy, let's loot for toilet paper, right? Um, but it's going to be short-lived, but I think people might be quite chaotic about it um, in the energy. Again, it's it's accessing the information from the field, you, you're recognising there's, there's an option that is more in accordance with you, and then you look around you at, at what's showing up in your society, and you find a way to meet them in the middle. Where it can work on both levels quite innovative okay so powerful moving on from that having achieved all this information access is higher knowledge i mean for some of you perhaps you are even taking a course uh online course or doing um like looking into some higher higher learning researching something it's all about um collecting the information okay within the field and within the physical plane then, as we move into July, we've got the Eight of Pentacles. So now you are applying it in the physical Earth. Now, the Hierophant accesses knowledge from the higher planes in order to bring it down to Earth. So the following month, you are certainly doing that. You are working like a dog. You are multitasking. You've got the vision and you understand how to apply yourself in different ways. And you may find yourself quite tired because it's, it's going to be pretty full on. And um, there's a lot to do, okay? And there's a lot of uh, things to, um, uh, what's that? The, it's like lifting, looking underneath stones, looking underneath concrete slabs to see what's underneath, what's lurking underneath. And you're kind of doing all of that, all, the, all of that heavy lifting to really get a good clean up and to know where you stand. So a lot of hard work, perhaps even some innovations in the home, perhaps even a physical move. You've got a lot on your plate, but you can handle it. Eights in numerology is about manifestation and um, pentacles is about the earth plane, the physical plane that we live in. Okay, so whatever you're putting your energy into, you will get it back. Okay, now, so as we go from the July of all of that hard work energy, we move into August and we've got the Ten of Wands. Okay, so the Ten of Wands tells me that in August, you're close to reaching your goal. You're almost at the finish line. So this is where you've been holding on to. You've had some extra responsibilities, perhaps some burdens, and you're basically in the process of bringing something to harvest. So everything that you've been working hard on, all those things, perhaps you've sent off information to um, ask for application forms or um, whether it be a job, a, a home, a rental, um, a business venture, whatever the case may be for you. You're sort of waiting for it. You're so close to get the answer, but it is very positively aspected because a Ten of Wands is essentially the completion of that Wands energy. So um, meaning that some sort of project comes to an end, you are able to just when you just before that finish line, you'll be able to let go of some of those responsibilities, some of those burdens, and move into the phase of the ace again. Okay, so even if this ace of wands had happened in March, comes to a close in August, it's it's a small cycle within the grander cycle of things. Okay, so August, you may be feeling a bit tired, a little bit run down, but you just you you're almost there. You're almost there. Okay. As we move into September, now you've got your thinking cap on again because you brought home the harvest and now you're looking at new measures, <coughs> excuse me, 
you're looking at new measures to forge ahead without anyone standing in your way is what I'm getting with this. And standing in your way, meaning that if you share your ideas, your plans for the future with people, you may lose the energy. It feels to me like it's going to be highly beneficial for you to keep your cards a bit close to your chest in September. It's like you're sussing up the situation, seeing where things sit and how you, what you can do in that situation. And you are trying to identify and um, research and gather your intel on and speak to many people as well. Um, maybe even technological kind of apps or things that might be very helpful for you to just gather your information. But you're really trying to work out a very clear route that is going to be the least bit damaging. So if I use a very extreme example of this, okay, say for example, you're living where you're living, you're working what you're doing, you've got your family, your friends, all of that, and then you notice, again, this is an example but an extreme one, and then you notice that uh, you are not able to enjoy the real fruits of your labor or your abundance isn't going very far as far as you would like in your current situational circumstance so perhaps you may be finding ways to enjoy your abundance and make your your money go further okay and make your love go further so you are your your focus is on abundance right and abundance is also freedom so you may be looking at ways to maybe even relocate whereby your money goes further or by um, you have more time on your hands to connect with your loved ones okay and you working out all of these parameters without really telling anyone because you would rather feel abundance and a sense of freedom um, which will be better than kind of struggle 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 okay so you I feel like you're accessing a lot of information and it feels to me like you get a really good um, a good a good path forward you have a a couple of good ideas about what to do in the situation now obviously that may not be your situation I'm using that as a very extreme example but it's something about trying to find the path of least resistance okay in struggle in an element of struggle and as you move into October we've got the knight of wands here so leading into that you've soaring to the skies and you're seeing things from a very high perspective you can see where it is you want to go and you are super duper excited there's enthusiasm there's energy behind you there's like forward thrust okay because the focus is on abundance i want as much freedom as i can have i want as much ability to enjoy the here and now without worrying too much about the future that's kind of the driving force and so it's almost as if you you could potentially you know in um in october be traveling or be uh, scouting out new opportunities with excitement right and as you move into november you're charging forward we've got the chariot here which is also a major arcana the chariot talks about thrusting forward, victory, triumph, understanding that what you've got is um, both good and bad in terms of skill set, in terms of knowledge. You've got loads of experience. You understand your so-called flaws and you're deciding, you know what, that horizon there is going to offer me a lot more than what I've got here. So I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to go for it. And you charge forward. Again, that forge forward, despite what anyone says. So you really are kind of building a plan, a solid plan come the end of the year. Okay. And it's got something to do with having to be more in, as a leader to yourself, rather than answering to anybody else. That is also kind of the focus that's coming through for this. In December, my goodness, King of Wands, he is that entrepreneur, he is that leader, he knows how to handle things, he knows how to get what he wants, right? You're feeling very kind of people looking at you and very um, 
I would say inspired by you, they admire you because you have this knack of like knowing what it is you want and going for it. And you are making waves as you do so. Now for some of you, of course, perhaps you're traveling towards somebody, male or female with the king of wands, it doesn't matter. It's that it's just that someone who's maybe not necessarily focused on the small nitty gritty details or the details, but definitely is pushed by this energy of wanting to nurture something into existence, looking after something. And so by the end of the year, you are fully in your leadership role. You are feeling I mean, you start the year off strong, but then you end of the year even stronger because you know what abundance means to you now. The ability, this is uh, Bashar's um, uh, definition of abundance that is uh, channeled by Daryl Anker. The ability to do what it is you need to do when you need to do it, as opposed to desire or want, need to do. Okay, So then understanding what your priorities are, what represents your needs in life is also a good way to learn what you need to have in order to live a fruitful life. Now, we move on to the cross of truth. The cross of truth we have in the placement of your foundation, we have the page of swords. Now the page of swords talks about um, that messenger of communication, okay? This could be areas, I don't know what your work is, but areas of your work could be relative to the internet or technology to some degree. And you may be finding that you keep returning back to a place of whatever that you are doing and harnessing for the future has got something to do with technology. And um, maybe, for example, if you're deciding to start your own business, you can do it anywhere in the world, but you still need the internet, right? Um, or it's to do with some sort of correspondence. Communication technology, very, very strong factors here. And needing to be in communication. It seems like it's the baseline for you that you keep returning to. Now, there may be some delays that come on with that, and then you're having to sort of wait a bit for that to come in. But um, I would say that it's kind of, that's, everything kind of relies on having that open communication and having the technology to be able to do so, okay? Now, your approach, the thing that you desire for the 2024 is beautiful. <laughs> it's the Empress. What does Empress represent? She represents abundance. Okay, the Divine Feminine says, I know how to create. I know how to birth things into creation. And I know that I have the full abundance to create that for myself. Okay, Divine Feminine is about also going out and doing stuff, but also allowing stuff to come to her. Okay, when you find yourself in the right vibrational frequency of that which you desire, then it, it, it just kind of slips into your environment when you don't pay too much mind. You know, you don't kind of focus on it too much. You just kind of go, yeah, it's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. And ultimately, it's following your heart. Uh, the Empress is about the heart space, the Divine Mother. How do you nurture something? How do you bring something to existence? Okay? It's beautiful energy. What's working in your favor, bizarrely, is the Two of Wands. So you may be feeling a little bit frustrated at, during times of the year where you feel like, oh, I feel like I'm back to square one again. If I remind you again about this energy where something was in April a little bit uncertain with the moon card, okay, and you were like looking at new avenues to uh, work around, this is actually the, 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 the strongest favorable energy for 2024 for you. Allowing yourself to, to adapt to new crossroads at many junctures, okay? And being at that point of like, okay, I can go this way, I can go this way with that. Or can you collaborate the two pathways into a new way, all right? So you're going to be finding yourself returning to a juncture many times throughout the course of the year. And what that does is essentially perfect or tweak your path uniquely to you. Okay? It's really about doing something completely different than nobody else has done before. And that's very, very favorable. The challenge for you is uh, keeping your finger on the pulse with the Eight of Pentacles. Okay, So the challenge may be having to, particularly if you're arriving at the crossroads often times, then you may need to be you may be called to reinvestigate information regarding that aspect, regarding that crossroads. What do those two, two, two paths 
bring to me. So there will be challenges with regards to whenever you hone in, hone in, hone in, hone in, there's more knowledge that needs to be attained, more work, more hours you need to put in, more mastering of your craft, okay? And it's showing up as a challenge more so because that it's kind of time consuming and it can be a little bit um, confusing sometimes because you were going down one side and you attained all that information and now that you arrived at this point, you've got to go back to the drawing board and gather your intel there as well. So it's a very, very busy year for you, but very prosperous, right? The outcome for the year, right, is the moon card again. So we've got the moon that's come up twice, and we had the eight of pentacles come up twice. So if I just show you these, so these are your moon cards, okay? And then your eight of pentacles, same cards, okay? So these are very strong themes in your field uh, for 2024. The moon card as an outcome is basically saying that nothing seems certain this year, okay? There is no end game. It's all about the here and now. The moon card may, every time you find yourself at that crossroads and they make a, a different turn in the road, uh, you may be thinking to yourself, well, phew, I, I, I don't know where this is going. I don't know how it, this is going to unfold. But guess what? Nobody does. With you, I feel like you're going to become a little bit of a master at this in terms of you're going to recognize the sort of discomfort that comes with not knowing how something is going to pan out. And you're going to sort of turn that and almost create that into more of an excitement, which is very, very good, right? And in that excitement, what you've done is you've essentially balanced your tame side and your wild side together so that you've got a good quota of both to move forward. You have enough wild energy in you to make some impulsive decisions, to be a bit more bold, to step outside the norm. And you've got enough tame energy to know how to follow certain systems and assess things on a very regulatory basis. So you will be finding yourself at many points of the year kind of going, well, I don't know how this is going to pan out, but guess what? I'm just going to go with it and I'm going to just sit with this energy because you'll find periodically you feel more um, energized to move forward onwards and upwards. So it's, I mean, it's a fantastic reading, Pisces. Um, really, really nice. We will end this with an oracle card, some message from spirit for you. Okay, what does Pisces need to know, please, for 2024, for their highest good? Okay. Ooh. Don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? So this is just kind of reinforcing what I was saying before about you finding your unique stamp, okay? You're understanding your tame and your wild side, okay? So this is just a reminder from Spirit to say that it is important that you keep forging ahead with your unique expression of life and what abundance and fulfillment means for you. There may be the tendency to slip back into the old conventional measures, right? Slip back into the old uh, expected behaviors. But Spirit is saying, no, 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 no. You are on the right trajectory over here. Every time you notice yourself blending in, dulling your energy, kind of um, becoming part of the group, that maybe doesn't feel right for you, Spirit is reminding you, no, 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 you've got to really harness your light. Don't be, be forthright in your actions, be forthright in your um, excitement of things, because that's going to really help everyone on the, like a human level, right, to lift their vibrations. So for some of you who are very spiritual, it's really, really important that you really do speak your unique voice, that you really do light your own energy and do the bold and brave things because we're all kind of looking at you for some guidance, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me, 
check in with yourself periodically to see where you may be kind of uh, blending into the background a bit and use that as an opportunity to try and kind of get back to your unique self. Ha. So Pisces, that's what I have for you. Now, if for some of you who are interested, I also do a uh, channeling with a seventh dimension, uh, seventh dimensional uh, collective called Anas Cassandra. I'm really struggling with my words here. We've done a 2024 forecast. We asked them a question, and that should be popping up on your screen very shortly as a video to watch if you are interested and to see what they say for humanity for 2024. For the rest of you, if you're interested in a personal reading or a personal channeling session, check out my website, lovetomore.com. Information is in the description box below. And if you like this reading, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, it's totally free. Comment, share, whatever you like. And have a beautiful, abundant year. Take care.